Brad, you, you took over the Huskies with call it two years of experience, but it was yep. arguably the two years in the history of hockey where you get the least experience, just it falling during the pandemic. Um, oh. But when, when the opportunity arose, um, you know, you were selected to take over and I'm sure the organization could have gone in any number of directions. Mm-hmm. What gave you the confidence that you were ready? And, and what do you think gave the organization confidence that you were the, the right man for the job? Well, I I think for myself, uh, it was definitely the learning aspects from those two years. Like even it was uh, a year and probably three quarters, I guess you could say, of being an assistant. And then unfortunately, with Mario's health, with uh, with his health uh, problems that were at the time. But as soon as I started from day one with the team, you know, I had my three years of uh, major midget or under 18 hockey back home in Newfoundland. Even before that, I had a couple of years uh, coaching senior hockey, which is actually how I officially kind of broke into no full-time way. coaching hockey yeah, as as head coach was with senior hockey. So I remember when I got uh, officially named as head coach, before it was announced, I called um, the kind of governor of, of that team, Joe Maynard, his name is, and I said to him, you know, thanks for allowing me to – have that time. Uh, now I'm going to be head cool. coach of a Quebec major junior hockey league team to kind of think about that. It's, it's, uh, it's crazy. And, um, but you know, I was very lucky right away from day one, when I got here, uh, Mario gave me a ton of responsibility. And like I said, for him, he was head coach and GM. So he definitely at times had to focus a lot more on the GM side of things. And he let me run with the coaching side of things right away from day one. Would I make mistakes? Yeah, absolutely. Do I make mistakes now? Yeah, absolutely. You know, I love making mistakes because it makes myself look vulnerable and I learn from it. So, and that's the biggest thing. But then he let me do, you know, five on five debriefs, five on five pre-scouts. He let me join in on meetings with players. He even let me join in on the GM side of things right away from day one. I don't know, you know, he, he kind of just, he said he felt it just kind of with our, with, with me coming here and and he had eventually said to me after my second year uh, my contract was finished he said listen sign sign another two years and you know you're going to be you're going to be head coach after that i, I want to transition into the more gm side of things but you're going to be the guy i said oh wow okay yeah so you know that would definitely be be incredible to have four years under my belt and then to jump into the head coach side of things so then unfortunately with his health um, he had to miss games here and there in that COVID bubble year. And I was able to take over and I got that taste for it. As soon as I got that taste for it in those bubbles, I was like, Oh, wow. I can't wait for, for that time to really be that head coach to put the stamp on it, to kind of, you know, throw lines out here and there. And in practice, you know, you, you have your standard of how you want to see things and, and, um, you know, got that little taste for it. And then eventually when he had to step aside because of his health, uh, the team came to me and said, you know, you're a guy that played here. You're a guy that's grown really well. Mario always said you're going to be the next guy. Uh, this day's generation of, of player and the scope of, of sports, we need someone who's, uh, who's young, can communicate, who understands the importance of the human side of things. As I, they said to me that uh, having my master's in psychology was a big boost as well. So um, having all those aspects and, of course, knowing what it what it took and and what it meant to be a husky was uh, was ultimately the deciding factors and for me of course did i go in into that full summer off uh, did i think that maybe i wasn't 100 percent ready yeah absolutely but that's in those times that i called other coaches uh, around the league and asked for a little bit of opinion about certain things in training camp you know talked a lot with marc andre bourdon again the former gm about certain things um you know, that's that's the nice thing about the coaching community when you have a good relationship with certain people that they're they're quick to help. You know, I can definitely say like Jim Holton in Charlottetown, because I I actually applied for for Charlottetown a couple of times. One time the timing didn't quite work for video coach and and they decided to go a different way with a, with another candidate another time. And you know, I can still call Jim to be able to ask his his uh, opinion on things because he's obviously one of the one of the best coaches uh, in this league, hands down, uh, you know, for for a number of reasons so you know very very lucky for for that relationship but you know it, it was just being able to get in 
get that year under the belt, feel, you know, work out uh, those kind of growing pains, make those mistakes and, and learn from them. And obviously being able to, to rely on staff around. And if, uh, if I had to come in and feel like I needed to do everything by myself, I'm sure I would be burnt out within a month because it is, it is, you know, stressful, you know, you're trying as much as possible to develop the process of things. You're trying as much as possible to make sure the individual players develop first, but in the back of the mind, it's like, okay, well, last year we went on an 11 game losing streak when we had two of our 20 year olds hurt, you know, in the back of my mind, I'm like, Oh my God, you know, it's, and am I for sure survive? it's real. Yeah. You know, it's, it's like, uh, you know, it, it's definitely tough for that, but you know, my, my biggest thing that I always talked about, even when I was coaching under 18 back home in Newfoundland and, you know, some people kind of give me that sideways kind of look for that. It's like, yeah, I, I want to win championships hundred percent. I want to win president's cup here on home ice in Rouen and I want to win the Memorial cup. Absolutely. 100%. But at the end of my time, finishing coaching, whether it be here or, or in general, that <laughs> if, we can have the players that have come back to us and say, hey, my time here with the Huskies set me up for, for this in life. Or looking back and seeing all the guys that were able to jump into, you know, scholarships at universities or jump into pro opportunities or, or just really set themselves up for great, great lives because of their time here. And we we're able to help help them achieve that. Then that's that's ultimately why why I and we coach here is to be able to help those players develop that way. So and those young men develop that way. So. You know, it's it's it definitely just keeping that at the forefront of my mind, not worrying too much about the the results side of things, but really just trying to make sure that the players and people improve here on a daily basis, and that uh, they're respected, and that they they ultimately enjoy the process of things as well. Just on the you know the human side, Brad, I, I take a lot of notes through these conversations, and 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 one word that I keep writing down is is vulnerability. And, you know, I don't think it's possible to, to ask people to be vulnerable or, or to have them be vulnerable. If, if you're not vulnerable yourself, what does that look like for a head coach? Well, it's, it's owning mistakes. That's for sure. Um, you know, there's been a couple of games even this year that, you know, we'll, we'll take part of the responsibility. We'll take part of the blame for certain things and, uh, maybe it might be a scheduling issue. Maybe it might be a an organizational issue. Maybe it might be something along those lines that will take will take part of the blame and and even you know make a mistake uh, with not making a line change at the right time. You know, call own it up. And even there's sometimes in games that you know I, I'll start to kind of get a little bit frustrated. And you know, it's nice being able to have those two TV timeouts. I'll say to the guys, okay, like, all right, I'm the worst one right now with composure. OK, I'm I'm very bad at that right now. I need to com get more composed. I need to calm down, but I'll calm down. I want you guys to kind of do the same. Let's find our, our breath here right now. Let's let's get back into working hard. Let's let's be more positive here. And it starts with me and, and I'll be better at it. And even kind of just with the mental health side of things that we want to make sure that each player understands that they're not just a hockey player, that they're they're a young, young person that they're a developing young man. So just to be able to really make sure for that, that they understand the importance of, of talking. And, you know, I, at the start of the year, we have Jerome, our, our uh, mental performance uh, person come in and talk to us, uh, talk to the group as a whole. And I'll tell the players, say, boys, listen, like Jerome is there anytime, whether you want him to come to the rink, whether you want to go talk to him at his office, whether you just want to call him, text him, He's always there, but you guys have to always know that we're always here too. Okay. Whether it's going to talk to one of the assistant coaches, whether it's going to talk to me, the door is always open. Is it easy for the player to do that? No, absolutely not. But then that's where I want to be able to get them to know. I said, well, like I went to talk to Jerome last year. You know, I went through a breakup with a girlfriend that wasn't quite uh, working well with me that I, I wanted to go talk to him about that. And at the end of the season, I talked to him as well to be able to, to debrief. So I talked to him coaching and personal. So I talked to him for both aspects. So I, I have no issue to tell tell the players that because that's that's who I am. And that's uh, I, I don't want the players to feel like I'm hiding anything about who I am or or what what I value in my life. And even I've talked to him before about when I went through uh, my time playing 
playing that uh, I had a lot of concussions. And with the concussions, you know, you focus a lot on the physical symptoms. You know, oh, I'm dizzy today or I have a headache today or I'm sick to my stomach. Oh, you know, that side of things that back then you really neglect the mental side of things. And, you know, I, yeah. I had a huge crash. I had a huge crash with the uh, with depression. You know, I, I went through six, seven, eight years of, of not feeling myself whatsoever. And especially losing that identity when I was told I couldn't play hockey anymore. And, you know, I turned to turn to substances and tried to help myself feel better. And I, I'm not afraid to be able to talk to, to players uh, about my personal experience, because again, that's that vulnerability. That's my experience of what got me here into this position. And I'm not afraid to talk about that. And, you know, being able to, if, if that one part of me saying, you know, I, I went through something with mental health that, you know, I, I wanted to seek help for or talk about, and that helps one player, then that's that's the whole reason why I wanted to be able to talk about it in the first place anyway. So, you know, I just want to make sure that for the players, they understand to be vulnerable is to be human and to be human, it's to make mistakes and to need help at times. So we want them to fully understand that on a daily basis and we'll never, ever um, um confront a player or, or make a player feel bad because they come to us with a situation or they ask a question or anything like that. We'll talk to them. Even if, even if we have a, you know, we, we do a meeting and we say to a guy, all right, listen, we're doing two, one, two, four check. And we say it six times and he comes in and thinks we're doing one, two, two. We'll be like, no, listen, like here, exactly. This is what we're doing. So, you know, we, we just want to really make sure for all the players that they're, they're in a safe environment here in a respected environment and not just one that's only put solely on, on the player side of things, but on the human side of things as well. Well, listen, man, that's, you know, and I, I, I'm probably speaking more as a father now, but that's one of the most refreshing answers we've ever had on this show. And, um, and I, I think, you know, one of the things is like, not everybody's maybe comfortable talking about those things, but everybody can relate to them. And, but, but commend you can, uh, absolutely respect again as a parent, just, just having your kids around somebody that, that is human and, you know, um, can, can respect that, you know, you know, if you've got 24 players on your team, um, you know, they're, they're dealing with life as much as they're dealing with hockey. So, um, that's really cool. One of the most important things to anyone, especially competitive athletes is feedback. No one wants to hear a great game all the time. They want to know why they played well or why they didn't. And Power Player is a very good platform for this because it encapsulates many of the areas of the performance spectrum. Now, a player might have gone pointless in a game, but a coach can watch that player's shifts and then say to that player, hey, you scored four goals, you were on the ice for three, and you made a really good play that helped us get into a scoring situation, and that is really important for our team. A player who played hard and smart in a game might not show up on the scoreboard, but the analytics folks might think he was the best player in that game, and we need to make sure that we can assess those areas of a player's game and provide that feedback to him or her. Practice is also an area where coaches can generate a lot of dialogue with players. How you practice is how you play, and many good youth hockey coaches have found a way to film practice, review it, and give feedback regarding work ethic, execution, and compete level. Power Player has metrics for all of this, as well as a great area for using video, which to me is the best teaching tool we have, and which I utilized a ton on this platform. Power Player allows coaches to reach a greater number of players on a larger number of topics in a way that today's young athlete needs and understands.